My name is Kevin Van Dam, and I'm a professional bass fisherman. As a professional angler, one of the main things that I do is I fish tournaments. And you know, I've been doing it for 33 years as a pro. All I wanna do is win. It's not easy. At the top level, it's super competitive, it's cutthroat. Every time I'm on the water, I'm still learning like I did my first year. The difference in winning and losing is what's between your ears. You gotta read the conditions, it's always changing, and you have to adapt, and that's what I try to do is just fish fast, cover water, and make it happen. To be able to be competitive and win these three and four day events, there's no luck involved. You have to be good. I just wanted to compete to see how good these guys really were, and that's what sucked me in. How'd it work out? Pretty good. So I grew up in Michigan, you know, in Kalamazoo to be exact, and uh, we have a lot of different types of fisheries. And I think it's one of the things that really helped me be successful as a professional angler all around the country is having that diversity. If you love the outdoors, Michigan's a, definitely a great place to be from. So we are mid-season on the Bass Pro Tour, and the next event is one that I've been really looking forward to. It's in New York, it's at Cayuga Lake, and what I like about it the most is that it's very similar to where I grew up in Michigan. You know, it's clear water, it's got grass, it's got largemouth, it's got smallmouth. You know, the last time that I fished an event there this time of the year uh, was actually a Bassmaster Elite event in 2016, and I won it, so I'm really looking forward to this event. So getting ready for this tournament, I've got a lot of prep to do here. I know how this thing, in my mind, is gonna lay out as, as gonna be a lot of sight fishing, a lot of spawning. Upload my waypoints from the past. There we go. Lots of waypoints to go back and check. Yeah, the last time I was at Cayuga in June, I actually won the tournament then, so it's good to save those waypoints. A lot of the work that I've already done finding the stretches that a lot of the fish are gonna spawn on, it's gonna be the same. I mean, the bottom doesn't change, so that's, a, that's gonna be a big leg up. I am definitely um, a little bit high strung, for sure, very much a doer. I don't like to sit still. I'm always a busy body, and my wife would attest to this. It kind of drives her crazy at times. I just always like to be doing something. You know, I want to be working on my tackle or my equipment, and I think that's one of the things that's that's helped me in my career is that you know I'm not afraid to to put in the extra effort. I'm borderline. Uh, probably annoying in a lot of cases. So right now we are just going to go through and get all of our rods rigged. I'm, I'm gonna throw a lot of Texas rig. So, you know, you just take a light sinker and an offset hook like this and an ocho and pitch it into holes in the grass. It's a great way to catch some big ones. During the spawn, they definitely protect their nests against gobies and bluegills. So anything that's goby colored or bluegill colored, this is one of my favorite colors for these clear water lakes like this. It's kind of green pumpkin with some blue swirl to it. You know, stick worms in general are really good baits during the spawn. I'm gonna have four or five of these ready to go. I mean, it's just dynamite for the spawn. One of the key things about sight fishing for spawning bass is that every one is different. I'm gonna have all of these rods just set up in a rotation so that if they're not getting a reaction with one, I'll pick another one up and, and throw it in there. But you never know which, which one is gonna be the bait. I can switch them all up and I'll do that. I'll make two or three casts with one and throw in a different bait totally in there, color, style, and everything, and just watch how that fish is reacting to it. So sight fishing is definitely an art. So you just, you gotta be prepared with a little bit of everything. So we've gotten a lot of all the finesse baits done, all my spinning rods for bed fishing, things like that, but I still have to have some baits for fishing the grass on the northern end of Cayuga, and that means a thunder cricket. I mean, this is something that anytime that I've got grass, you know, clear to stained water, I'm gonna have a series of thunder crickets ready to go. Last thing 
is I don't go any place without having multiple jerk baits rig. I've got you know some natural colors. I've got the siren. I've got a little 200 series um, on. So all in all, now I, you know I've probably got about 35 rods rigged for Cayuga. And uh, the next thing I got to do is drive and get there. I'm looking forward to this one. New York's only an eight-hour drive, so this is a short day for me. So should be a good day. We are ready to roll. My dad got me started fishing when I was three years old. You know, after that, I de definitely had the bug, and it didn't really matter. When I was growing up, I just liked to catch anything. My brother started a sporting goods store here in Kalamazoo called DNR Sports Center, and I started working there when I was 11. And it really helped uh, me immensely because every day, all day long, I'm immersed in tackle, boats, the latest equipment, and around people that have the same passion. How was he as an employee? You know, he was pretty good except for he wanted to go fishing all the time. But it's all worked out for the best. Yeah. <laughs> so we've always been a fishing family and a huge part of that is my wife Sherry. We met before I was a pro angler and she was with me through the whole process. Sherry always allowed me to focus on the fishing and she handled basically all the business. You know, a few years later, we had Jackson and Nicholas, we had the boys, and you know, they were born super premature. You know, that was a tough thing to go through. Super challenging, stressful time, you know, in our lives for sure. It wasn't long after we got them home from the hospital that they were out on tour. And, you know, to this day, my boys are still an integral part of, of what we do. We are an outdoors family through and through. You know, I actually fished my first tournament when I was 14 with my older brother. We finished second in that. I got the tournament bug big time. When I got into it, I really got into it. By the time I was 18, I fished my first Bassmaster Invitational. And I just really wanted to see how good the guys that I grew up watching were. You know, that first season, you know, I did real well right out the gate and just really kind of kicked off my career. You know, had a, had a great start, finished in the money, you know, I think 23 consecutive times at the beginning. Over 33 years, I've pretty much competed about in every format, every style. So how many tournaments have you won? Yeah, I don't know, dude, it's, it's a bunch. You know, I've had a lot of big wins, you know, the Angler of the Year titles, and I've won a lot of, you know, championships. The Bassmaster Classic, it's the Super Bowl of the sport. You know, I've won that four times. I mean, I never got into this sport thinking that, hey, this is what I'm gonna do to make a living or that I wanna be a professional angler. I just loved competitive fishing and I was just doing it and the rest kind of just fell into place. You know, when people look at my legacy, I hope that they look at the way that I played the game, you know, my work ethic, what I put into it, the integrity that I've had over my career and just respect what I've done. I mean, that's the legacy that I wanna leave is knowing that I did it with honor, respect, and integrity. Made it. This is one week here where we've got a, a really full house. There's actually six of us staying here. So we got six boats to park in here. It's kind of a little bit of a juggling act, but we made it work last year and we're gonna do it again. Then we got a Bass Pro appearance uh, this evening yet, so it's the beginning of the Bass Pro Tour event at Lake Cayuga. Should be crazy. Anytime I come to the Bass Pro Shops, I always look for any of the special colors that we do that are hard to find. You gotta snag them when you can. One of the things that I look forward to is these appearances and, and meeting a lot of fans. You know, what's unique about our sport is that our fans are just like us. They're fishing in the same water. They like to watch and see what we do on their home body of water to help them be more successful. And that's one of the things that I love about my job is being able to teach people to have a better experience when they go out there in the water. Thank you. You bet. Good luck, man. Thank you. Hey, how you doing, man? 
Can I get a picture? Sure. No problem. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck. You know, all the, the locals around here, they're super excited that we're here. They love to talk fishing. A lot of bass fishing uh, goes on up here in upstate New York and some incredible fisheries. So should be just a really, really good week. Being a pro angler, it's about interacting with your fans. You know, I learned at an early age that you can't take that for granted. All those sponsors on your jersey and, and all that, that doesn't come by accident. And your fans are who you're working for. Those relationships are really, really important. Oh, nice. That was a few years ago, wasn't it? 2016. He's grown up a good bit since then. See how much taller he is now? <laughs> I have had a lot of young anglers come up to me that have said, man, I really appreciate your positive attitude, how you do things. And, and they're like, hey, I, I really want to you know, model my career after what you've done. And, and that means a lot to me. That tells me right there that I've done a lot of things right. First morning of practice here at Cayuga, and today it's definitely, you know, I want to try to find as many fish as I can, uh, you know, a perfect day with sun. We're supposed to get some wind, but first and foremost, um, you know, I'm going to check some, some largemouth areas up on this north end that we'll do that until the sun gets up, until we can actually see, and then, then we're going to get after just totally looking for them. So right now we're on the north end of the lake and it's it's just a huge flat. I mean, it's it's literally no deeper than 10 foot anywhere across and it's it's got a lot of grass on it. And intermittently out here, there's some scattered clean spots or some gravel patches, some rocks and things like that. You know, they end up eventually, a lot of them spawn out here, largemouth do. Can't see anything yet anyways, the sun's real low. So once that sun gets up, I'm definitely gonna spend my time physically looking where I know that I got eyes on the prize. <laughs> rock bass, they also live where the rocks are at though. Yeah, there it is. Well, little guy, that's not what's supposed to be sitting there. Should have been a five pounder. I see enough now where you, it's this real stringy grass here and you know when the sun gets up you could you could be able to see the holes a little bit better than at it. Another one. God darn. Let's pick up and move. this looks like out here. With these scattered patches and holes in this grass, it's only like seven foot deep. You know, just trying to cover a huge flat like this, I can throw this thunder cricket out there. Early light like this and that, you know, an active one or two, I mean, if there's a group of them, they, one should come up and bite it. There's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the ones right there. Oop, perfect. I just, I can see one swimming right here. About a two pounder right there, just up above the, in the top of the grass. That's a good sign. So, you know, if it gets super cloudy and windy and it makes it hard to sight fish, you know, if you, if you can come to an area like this and cast around or throw a thunder cricket and, and get quality bites, that could be real critical for that day. And I'm starting to get clumpy again. So important in Clearwater Lakes that you've got good polarized glasses, you know, it allows me to see that green grass out there a little further out there to where I can see some of those clumps to pitch to them. I mean, you can't get right on top of these fish in this clear water. Mm -hmm. Chunky one. It's just real stringy grass, but there's thick clumps of it out here, and there's no doubt they're gonna be around it. In clear water like this, most of them are gonna bite it on that initial fall. If they're on a bed, it's it's going to land right next to them, and there's a good chance they're gonna just eat it right then. It's a nice one, but in this lake, that ain't gonna do you any good. You need four and five pounders. That's definitely a lot of fish in this area though. That's always a good thing. Okay, I've, I've had enough and done enough of this. <laughs> 
you know, the sun's getting up where I can see a little bit, so I'm gonna get down there where I can see, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of fish um, spawning, so that's what I really wanna look for. The good part is, is, you know, I got a few bites up here, I'm seeing a little bit, but we got a good start anyways. Got an idea. see them. This time of year there's definitely going to be a lot of smallmouth that are spawning and you know with the wind blowing the direction it is it's making it it's making it hard but I mean they're they're definitely here it's stirred up. They're pretty willing biters when you do find them. This is a mix of sand and and scattered boulders it's it's really perfect spawning habitat for them. It's a good good looking stretch. I hate to do it, but we got to go to that other side again. Keep moving. That's why we call it practice. <laughs> Good eating. That's what they eat. Perch and gobies are probably what they spend the most of their time feeding on here. I can't see squat. I know they're somewhere here. I just got to keep hitting these little stretches, just looking for my own sanity here. There's one, freaking big one too. Here, I just saw one, a five pounder on a bed that was there <laughs> years ago in the same exact spot, exact. So as protective as he was, it, it wasn't gonna be a hard one to catch. That's another bed right there though. I've made a good many stops and in these conditions it's really hard, but I just want to know that there's a good amount of them spawning to focus on, you know, to, to do it. I, there's another bed right there. This is the only way to play right here. It's just really hard to see right now. Oh, there's a big one right there. <laughs> a real big one. Here's another one right here, I think. We've got really pretty good conditions sunshine wise, but I mean, with this wind blowing straight out of the north, it's blowing into this bank and it's just knocking all the algae and stuff loose. So it's, it's muddying up the bank, hard to see. But what I did see is a handful of smallmouth and a couple of really, really good ones to just know that they're up here. You know, I'm gonna spend some more time looking for largemouth up there in that north end, but this will definitely play if you get anything of the right type of condition. Good one. It's so windy, it's stirred up the bank where you can't sight fish, you know, looking for smallmouth or anything. So I'm kind of up on this big grass flat again. Um, I got some bites in here this morning. Um, now that the sun's out, you out a little deeper, I can see these patches pretty good and just want to see how it lays out. I've not seen another soul fishing this little bit deeper grass like this. Everybody's fishing up there on the inside line and that's the place where a lot of the fish are going to spawn, but there's a lot of them that spawn out here too. Good one. Yeah, you live out in this grass. Look at that one. That one has already spawned. Conditions like this, those will, those will go a long way right there. Oh, man, there was a big one following it right there. Smallmouth too. Getting where I can see pretty good here, boy. The wind is starting to lay down just a little bit, so I'm back just trolling real fast. You know, I got my hood up so I can see. It's gonna be important um, if, it, if the wind lays down to be able to see how some of these areas clear and see how quickly they do. The birds are diving out here that I'm sure there's a bunch of alewives spawning on these shallow points, especially with the wind on it like this. And, There's some shallow. A little thunder cricket. Look at it. Already spawned. A lot of the largemouth, man, they have, have done it, but those are the, that's the right kind of size right there. You know, overall, um, you know, the, the bite is 
has been kind of tough today for me. You know, I've, if, once I got out of that one area in the north end with that deeper grass, it's just been real intermittent. So hopefully uh, we get a little reprieve from the wind. I mean, it'll clear up really fast and we'll get after them again tomorrow. So we've got one more day of practice to try to put things together. So really need uh, a few hours of, of calm in the morning where, you know, can be able to, to get around and, and look around just a little bit more. So. But it's a great lake and uh, definitely going to be a lot of big fish caught. Man, just getting ready for day two. You know, got up this morning, a little tired, long day yesterday. Uh, you know, made some sandwiches, got some coffee going, getting ready to get out in the water. I'm definitely going to spend some more time looking today, try to find some more sight fish for sure. You know, I just got to see what stage they're really in to allow me to see how many fish are shallow. So day two was, uh, you know, much different day. You know, we had calm conditions. I basically spent the day just sight fishing. I covered a ton of ground today, ran my batteries completely dry, just basically looking, and I found a lot of big smallmouth, and uh, that's where my heart's at, so I've got I've kind of got to go for them. Got a little bit of prep tonight, and to get these batteries on the charger here real quick and uh, get ready for tomorrow. So today is the first day of the tournament. So, you know, all the prep, all the, everything we've done to this point, you know, it's all working towards this first day. So I feel really good about uh, the game plan that I have and, and what I've found. So hopefully we can get it all put together. You know, this season so far has, has kind of been an up and down year for me. So it's really important to start this one off well. It's gonna take some big weights. This lake's got a lot of big fish. I want to set the bar real high, catch a giant bag the first day. You absolutely have to love it if you want to be competitive at the top level. Not burning out, not slowing down, not giving up, you know, keeping that positive mental attitude. You have to keep that level of momentum and focus going from start to finish. Yeah! You know, at this point in my career, it's not about cashing a check or having a, a solid event. I want to win. I want to be able to, to do it quicker and faster and better than anybody else. Doing it because you love it and you want to measure yourself against the best in the world. So we just finished up here at Cayuga today. Uh, just an incredible fishery. Ended up just like I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I prepared for it and practiced for a sight fishing event. You know, I mean, just really used my polarized glasses. And just like I strategized and practiced knowing that I'm gonna be fishing for spawn and smallmouth, you know, I caught all of my fish on, you know, a baby Z2, a Strike King half shell, and a dream shot, both on a drop shot rig and on a Ned head. Every single fish that I weighed in this event, I caught on those baits. Just a mix of colors. Every fish was a little bit different. That's a big launch there. KVD will win Group A. Well, so far the tournament is, uh, you know, it's, it's going real well for me. You know, I know the knockout round when the weights get zeroed, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Oh, yes. That was five something. Five pounds, seven ounces. Hour and 20 minutes left in the day. Kevin Van Dam caught a 5-7. It's his second biggest bass of the day. Got him across the Toro cut line. He'll fish his fourth Bass Pro Tour Championship round with a chance at his second win. You know, I ended up making uh, the championship round. I started in 10th place. So when you're out there on the water and you're and you're seeing these smallmouth, you know, they won't let you get right on top of them in most cases. So you kind of got to stay back. And it was really hard to know what size they were. So on this final day, you know, I, I caught a lot of four plus pounders that didn't help me just because you just couldn't tell and, you know, just really hard to judge the size. So that was one of the challenging things of this event. Today, I just couldn't really move up. I, I couldn't find those bigger fish. So I ended up in 10th here, but really a solid week. You know, uh, anytime you make a championship round, it's a, it's a good day. It's a good week for points, for, you know, qualifying for Red Crest and for AOIs. 
Uh, I would have never dreamed going in that I'd have caught over 100 pounds of smallmouth for four days and ended up in 10th place. So thanks for following along uh, all week long. It's been a lot of fun to kind of let you inside a little bit of my tournament prep and in, inside my world for the week. And uh, look forward to getting on the road here, heading home and getting ready for the next one.